So Adobe's October 2024 update is now available for download. I've downloaded it and I'm going to have a quick look through the new features and see how they could help landscape photographers. I know some of these features have been in beta for a while, but I currently work for a software development company. That's my day job. And I understand what beta means. So I like to wait for a proper release, which should have less bugs. Not no bugs, just less bugs. So there's, there's plenty of improvements to the generative AI side of things, but I'm going to focus on the features that will probably be the most used by landscape photographers. And for AI, that's going to be the distraction removal tool. This feature has been added to uh, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop and Camera Raw version 17, the latest Camera Raw. My workflow mainly consists of cataloging in Adobe Bridge, using Camera Raw, then Photoshop. So that's where I'm going to test it out. So let's jump in. OK, let's jump into Camera Raw. I'm having to do this a second time after I've recorded the whole video because my screen capture didn't work. But now you can see I am in Camera Raw. It looks beautiful. And I am going to try and remove this boat here. Now, the reason I picked this photo is one, because Adobe have used a boat removal as a picture to promote this new feature. And I want to see how it deals with the reflections and the things around the boat and see how well this does. So in Camera Raw, I've come over to the Remove feature. I've selected Generative Remove, this one on the left. I've ticked Use Generative AI. Um, and I've also ticked Detect Objects. So now, apparently, I can just roughly scrub over what I want removed. Now, let me zoom in a bit to the boat so it makes it a little bit easier. I want to remove this bit of the boat this bit of the reflection above the oar, this disturbed water, come around and just scrub the rest of these guys out. Selected quite a lot there that I didn't want. So let's just refine it a little. Let's take that away. That's fine. This bit of the boat is fine. going to take a while. I thought it would be a little bit better than this in the object selection, but obviously not. Um, there we are. OK, I've completely taken it off the boat below. So let's give this a go. If I click remove and now it's taken out the boat. Fine. But is it fine? If I zoom back out, you can see that the boat's no longer there, but there's a couple of things. Um, let's go back down. What is this nonsense it's put in? What is this reflection here? That's different. That shouldn't be there. What has it done well? Um, it's sort of extended these reflections down on the water. I guess that's OK, but is it really representative of what's being reflected? That's something that you'll have to take into account. But you can see where it's come in and taking it out because the fidelity of what's been generatively added after the generative removal, all this generative nonsense, isn't quite as much as there. So I wouldn't use this for print at all. But I don't know, it's done an OK job. Should we try it again? Let's try and remove these people. Let's say I don't want these people on the side here, on the jetty. All right, remove. It comes in. This has worked a little bit better than the boat scenario. If I zoom in and move across. You can see it's put the jetty back in. I, I didn't select the uh, the trail of the dress there, so that's been left. But what has been selected, it's done not a bad job there and put in the reflections of what kind of would have been behind them, taken 
taken what's meant to be there. Actually, that's not too bad. Would I use it over and above the, the stamp tool in Photoshop? Mm, probably not, because I do like pixel peeping, and this isn't quite perfect. But if I was just going to post this to social media and I wanted to quickly get rid of something, it's not too bad. Okay, the next feature I want to talk about is called content credentials. This feature has been added to Lightroom Desktop, Web and Mobile, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop and Bridge. And according to the release notes, you can add things like digital signatures, editing information and more when exporting to JPEG or PNG. It's a beta feature in a full release. Um, not sure how I feel about that. But you can either attach these credentials to the file itself, I assume is like metadata, or publish the credentials to a public cloud service operated by Adobe. Attaching them to the file, let's talk about that first. It may increase the file size, um, it's more private and they're not stored on the cloud or service anywhere, but they could be stripped from the file by, let's say, uploading to social media um, or by any sort of metadata stripper that's readily available on the internet. Publishing to the cloud, however, secures that data separately, making that data easily recoverable. On the cloud, you'll have a public profile, so I assume others can verify your photos are actually yours. You can also connect your online accounts to your Adobe, um, Adobe profile, so people viewing your public Adobe profile can link to your other socials. Identity reference, I think they're calling it. Currently supported is their own one, Behance, Instagram, LinkedIn, and X brackets Twitter. Love that you still have to put the brackets Twitter in there. Adobe has also been quite bullish on Web3, and it seems as MetaMask and Phantom are also available. Um, so apparently this is NFT creative attribution, their words. The NFT craze was mostly a load of nonsense in my eyes, and I'm not massively up on the latest with Web3 at the moment, but I suggest you read the T's and C's if this is something that you might be interested in. So jumping into Photoshop, you can right click a tab and enable the content credentials beta. And then you get this extra panel down here and you can select which types of data you want to be added. In the settings, you've got history and content credentials. And this is where you can do the other settings. So this is where you can choose whether to publish it to the cloud or attach it to a file or have none and you can have different enabling options as well. If you use generative AI, however, which includes the generative remove tool we just talked about, you are forced to use content credentials and you automatically get opted into the generative AI transparency option. You can see it's already grayed out on my panel here because I've used generative remove on these photos. So what data is saved? The producer, which is the name listed on your Adobe account, produced with the application or device used to produce the final image, so Photoshop in this instance. Edits and activity, the editing and processing actions taken to produce the final image. This is really interesting for those of you gatekeeping Photoshop or Lightroom tricks. This, this may reveal your secrets. Another thing that's included is assets, which is the other pieces of content used to produce the final image. With this, I assume it means like any added extra overlays, those used to add clouds or fog or other texture packs that you might use in Photoshop. And the last one is signed by, so the organization responsible for issuing the content credential and recording information within a valid way. Whatever that means, though, those were Adobe's words. I can see this being a good tool for those of you who want to make sure you can clap back at people who steal your content. Also, I think photography competitions may start taking advantage of this, uh, maybe to verify the submitted images. If you have the edits and the force generative AI edition, it could help weed out some dodgy entries. Quick actions. This is a new feature that's been added to Bridge. It may not be a feature that's going to be used by a lot of landscape photographers, but I can definitely see it being very useful in other niches, such as wedding or sports photography. 
Currently, the actions for photos are remove background, resize or crop image, convert to SFG, and for video, you have convert to GIF or MP4, or trim and resize the video. I was hoping for more, maybe quick actions to copy and then apply raw edits from one image to another, and quick actions for different JPEG exports. I want to export things differently, depending on whether I'm printing, web, or posting to social. Now, well, maybe they'll flesh out this feature in the future, but at the moment, it's pretty useless to me. I've loved the noise reduction available in Camera Raw and Lightroom since it's been launched. But one big bugbear for me was that DNGs weren't supported. If I wanted to do a HDR panorama, I would have to process all the images first with noise reduction, save them to a DNG, and then stitch those DNG files back together, which took ages. But now, HDR, Pano, and DNG are supported by the Denoise, which will make that workflow so much quicker. Something new for Camera Raw, not available in the other programs at the moment, is Adaptive Profile. The profile is the instruction set for how a RAW file is rendered before any edits. Typically, I use Adobe Color, for example. Adobe have a number of profiles, your camera has them too as well. And you can download and add many third-party profiles as well if you want to. So what is this new adaptive profile? Well, you guessed it, it's AI. Let's just shove the word AI on everything we see these days. <sighs> anyway, so this means that your image will be tagged made with AI in the content credentials if you use this. What is the adaptive profile? Well, apparently it analyzes the photo and creates a profile just for that image. In Adobe's own words, the effect is as if the AI had changed exposure, shadows, highlights, color mixer, curves, and other controls for you, although the actual controls stay in their original neutral position. So it's basically doing an edit for you. It's been trained on thousands of photos from different times of the day, different lighting conditions with lots of different subjects, different places, different styles, different niches. Then, thankfully for once, uh, there is a human involved in this process of creating this feature. They are verifying the styles produced and selecting ones that were most appealing. So let's just have a quick look. I've got one open on the screen now, a random photo I've selected from the Faroe Islands, a bit overexposed maybe, and this is the profile Adobe Color. Now I'm gonna change this to Adobe Adaptive, which is the beta profile, updating AI settings, and it's really brought up all of the shadows. If I go back to color and see what's changed, I mean, it's sort of neutralized the shadows and brought them up. It hasn't really maybe made the greeners a bit greener and saturated it a bit more, but I, I don't like what it's done there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to play around with this, but first impressions are not great. So in conclusion, I'm glad there was humans involved in verifying this AI profiling model, but the results will be tailored to what those humans see as visually appealing, not necessarily what I see as appealing as um, my artistic impression of the scene that I photographed. However, it may give you a better base image to start your edits from. Purists, though, aren't going to like this, this AI getting involved everywhere. There's a whole article on this subject on the Adobe blog, which I'll put the link in the description if you want to have a cup of tea and read through it before bed. Obviously, I'm not going to go through literally everything on the release notes for all these different software packages, but here's some more of the notable improvements from what I've seen so far. Smart albums in Lightroom, allowing you to select photos from a folder based on the number of rules, including focal length, f-stop and ISO, people, location, flag, you get the idea. So if you want an album with, let's say, photos of your nan taken with a certain lens in a defined place without a flash, then you can create an album with all those rules. 
Camera Raw Denoise now supports Apple Pro Raw and Samsung um, Expert Raw for you phone shooter guys out there. You can now save your own custom curve points for repeated use in either normal editing or masking. Generative Expand now in Camera Raw. I'm not going to use that. Enhancing using Denoise, Raw Details and Super Resolution as now apparently non-destructive in Camera Raw which is great news. It doesn't create a new DNG file. My many, many millions of hard drives will thank Adobe for this particular feature. Lightroom Classic HDR JPEG exports now include ISO game maps. Bridge now supports HEIC and HEIF file formats. And that's about it. If you're big into your AI, then there's lots for you in these updates. Although I suspect a lot of you landscape photographers aren't too keen. I'll be really interested to see the direction of this content credentials, especially the cloud stored ones, and maybe even what happens in the Web3 space. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on AI and the content credentials. Will you use them? Are they useful to you? Other than that, there's a good few quality of life improvements. Is it worth the extortionate amounts of money we pay for Adobe SaaS subscriptions these days? Mm, who knows? Anyway, like and subscribe, bell notification and all of that nonsense and I'll either see you in the comments or in the next video.